Is the impossible turn actually impossible? In this video, we'll break down the factors that make it difficult, what it looks like at different altitudes, and whether it's a viable option in an emergency. First off, let's break down what the impossible turn is. The impossible turn is a maneuver made when your engine fails shortly after takeoff. It involves a steep bank at low airspeed and a turn of more than 180 degrees to reach the runway. So, what makes it so difficult? Well, the main issue with the impossible turn is that there's very little room for error. It involves a gliding turn from a very low altitude with no engine power. Energy management is crucial here, and it's very easy to miscalculate. According to studies by the FAA, it takes around four seconds for a pilot to react in an emergency, even longer for less experienced pilots. During that delay at climb attitude, you'll naturally lose some airspeed. A Cessna 172 typically climbs at 62 or 74 knots. With the flaps up, the stall speed is 48 knots. This leaves you with a very slim buffer before you stall. So when you realize the failure, you must immediately pitch down to avoid stalling. But this means that you now need to trade additional altitude to get back up to the best glide speed. There's an even greater danger though. If you stall, you could lose several hundred feet. But even worse than this, is the fact that the chance of a spin also increases. A mismanaged turn can very likely result in a spin if you stall. In it, you can fall by over 2,000 feet. This only ends one way, and it's with a crash. But let's say you avoid a stall and spin, and you go for the turn. The problem here is that you need enough altitude to fly all the way back around and back to the runway. For every minute in a standard rate turn, also known as a rate one turn, a Cessna 172 descends by roughly 740 feet at best glide speed. If you lose power at 500 feet, then you're sure to hit the ground, unless you increase your bank angle. But with every extra degree of bank angle, you inch ever closer to the critical angle of attack and a stall. Why is this? When you bank, the total lift doesn't change. However, the direction in which the lift acts does. The lift splits into a horizontal and a vertical component, but now you have less vertical lift to counteract the aircraft's weight, so you descend faster. To stop this descent, you need to generate more lift. To do this without engine power, you can either increase the angle of attack or increase airspeed. Increasing the angle of attack will cause the airplane to slow below best glide speed. Pitching down for airspeed magnifies the already steep descent rate. Also, as you bank, the load factor increases. With an increase in load factor, your stall speed increases, and it's gradually going to approach your current airspeed. Any more bank, or any less airspeed, and you stall. And remember, the impossible turn isn't just a 180 degree turn. The goal is to head back and land on the runway. With all of this in mind, you decide to make a tighter turn while maintaining best glide speed. Well, a rate two turn, which is six degrees per second, will cut the radius by half, but you'll still be left with an extra 30 degrees to make the runway. Also, to avoid stalling as you increase your bank, you're gonna have to add airspeed. And what happens to the turn radius at high speeds? Yep, it also increases, effectively still taking you farther from the runway. You also have to consider the wind. If you have a headwind during takeoff, you'll have a tailwind on landing. With the increased ground speed, you barely have time to prepare for a safe approach. And if you somehow manage to turn back, a strong tailwind can significantly increase your landing distance. Okay, now let's look at how an engine failure during takeoff can unfold at different altitudes. If you decide to turn back at 1,000 feet AGL, you're at traffic pattern altitude, at this height in a Cessna 172, you might still make it back to the airport. But keep in mind all the potential hazards and take immediate action. In a heavier, less forgiving aircraft, you'll have a much harder time. In a Bonanza, you might need up to 1,500 feet to make it back. Let's say you turn back at 600 feet. At this altitude, you might feel like you can still make the runway. Well, remember that at best glide speed, a Cessna 172 descends at around 740 feet per minute. At steep bank angles, you can even fall up to 1,000 feet per minute. This only leaves you with around 45 seconds in the air at wings level, and even less time if you bank. 
the best course of action here is to land straight ahead. If that's not possible, the next best choice is to land within 60 degrees to either side. Scan for the best landing spot and maneuver the aircraft with positive control toward it. All right, even lower now. Let's say you lose power and turn back at 300 feet. At this altitude, you've got no time to make substantial turns. Your options are extremely limited. So how can you land safely? If there's no runway left, scan the area straight ahead and 30 degrees to either side. Pick the best spot, prepare the aircraft for an emergency landing, and put it down under control. But what if there's no place to land at all? This is a rare scenario, but sometimes airports can be surrounded by obstacles like buildings and terrain. In this case, your options are limited. If you fly into these airports often, consider whether they're worth the risk. Leaving yourself without an out is not good aeronautical decision making. So is the impossible turn a viable option in an emergency? Well, that depends on your altitude. Above a certain altitude, the impossible turn does become possible. The catch is that it depends on the aircraft, your skills, and the weather conditions of that particular day. Below traffic pattern altitude, you have little time to react. Focus on preventing a stall and landing in your selected area. If you need to turn, don't bank by more than 45 degrees. Did your engine fail at 1,000 feet AGL? In calm conditions, you can make the impossible turn but introduce a little bit of wind into the mix, and suddenly you come up fatally short. Above traffic pattern altitude, you have more time to turn. Pitch for the best glide airspeed and maneuver to the best landing area. With sufficient altitude, lots of practice, and the right weather conditions, the impossible turn becomes possible. But that's a lot of things that need to go right when landing straight ahead is usually a very good option. So is the impossible turn impossible? Not entirely, but it's best if you believe it is. To find out more about another potentially dangerous failure related to the pitot-static system, check out this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.